It's February and love is in the air, but not if your sales team is in a relationship with the wrong sales platform. Don't worry, Sales Hub from HubSpot is here to help. It's an all-on-one platform that helps teams prospect smarter, boost revenue, and scale better. Plus, it's easy to learn and free to start. What's not to love about all that? Be the perfect matchmaker and introduce sales to a new platform. With Sales Hub, closing deals is no big deal. Head to HubSpot.com slash sales right now. Happy Friday, everybody. It's February 16th. I'm John Wigel here with Ben Berkeley, and this is the Hustle Daily Show. Today is the last day you can return your Apple Vision Pro for a full refund, and many have already cashed out. Tech writers, consumers, and company heads alike have been trying out Vision Pro since its February 2nd release date in a chorus of, you guessed it, mixed reviews. But why have some decided to return the device, and where can Apple go from here? We'll chat about all that in a bit, but first, let's give you the hits and headlines today across business and tech. Starting off, OpenAI launched its new text-to-video model, Sora, yesterday to certain users, touting its ability to create, quote, complex scenes with multiple characters, motions, backgrounds, and more. This sounds pretty dang cool, honestly. Yeah, I want to play with this in part because it feels like it gets me closer to just typing in instructions to do this podcast <laughs> with you. Not that I don't want to, but it just seems like some days it might be nice when I just like, you know, just need a little quieter day. Yeah. And our bosses cannot listen to this podcast every day, right? Like, let's hope <laughs> so. But coming back to this, I think it's really fascinating that this is finally entering the mainstream because I think this is something that a lot of people in the video industry will take a very big interest in going forward. Because when you talk about sourcing stock imagery or stock photos or, you know, like Getty's got to be sweating in their boots right now about this. Yeah, and I mean, they, I think they have their own offerings. What's interesting about this to me is that text-to-video has been a thing. It kind of feels like OpenAI as a leader in AI, when they do a thing, it is noteworthy. Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. it's one of those just like, when the big players come in, it legitimizes that as a thing. Sure. And so it feels like text-to-video through this is that much more of a thing now. Yeah, definitely feels like an arrival. Yes. Moving over to Target. Target's new Dealworthy brand contains about 400 products. Most are priced below $10 to attract budget-conscious shoppers and compete with dollar stores. It will replace the Target brand smartly going forward. Next, U.S. drug prices saw a median increase of 4.7% in January. Yikes. The hike was spread across about 900 medications, including diabetes meds, Ozempic, and Manjaro. That's kind of alarming when you think about the inflation that we've been experiencing recently and how it's kind of bleeding into the health sector. Because I know, especially for a friend of mine that is a diabetes patient, like the medication ain't cheap. No, it is not. And I don't have the numbers to back this up, but I do have the experience in living America to say, <laughs> I don't think insurance is picking up this slack and helping to offset these costs for people. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it is really alarming. Yeah. This is also one of those things where in an election year, that's going to come up. Yeah. And that's one of those places I feel like gas prices where you really notice whether the economy feels good or not. And so hopefully this is something that gets reeled in sooner rather than later. I hope so too. And finally, Google and the Environment Defense Fund will use satellite data and AI to create a methane emissions map to help fight climate change. Methane accounts for about 33% of global warming. So this could be a big deal if used properly. Okay, on to the main story today. Today, our focus is on the Apple Vision Pro and the widespread internet discourse around it, which mostly reads, quote, wow, this is cool, but I'm returning it because it kind of hurts my head, essentially. <laughs> ben, what are your thoughts on the Vision Pro returns as of late? And is it really just as simple as, ah, oh, this kind of hurts my face? Well, first off, I just want to give some very important caveats off the top. I have yet to shove one of these on my face. Mm -hmm, so, mm -hmm. you know, take some authority off of what I'm saying about it. But it's also, no matter what happens with returns and numbers that come in, it's going to be too early still to call this a success or a failure, really anything as a product. I'd also just warn, we should just never bet against Apple. That's something that you can learn across time. But also, wow, this product like it's been out in the wild for <laughs> less than two weeks. And 
yeah, the general vibes around Vision Pro, they aren't so good right now. Yeah, at least from places that we see regularly, sites and people covering it and YouTubers and people on X, at least from a vocal minority, it seems like it's getting a bit of the shaft in terms of usability and how long you can use it. I think those are kind of the main two complaints that I've been seeing. But you're right, we can't exactly assess yet if it's a failure or a huge success. I think time will tell in that margin. But as of now, it seems like the people who are speaking out about it are speaking out about it pretty negatively, it seems. Yeah, I mean, I think it's generally not good when the expiration date of like a 14-day return period on a product is making headlines. Yeah. <laughs> like, and again, that is today. If you happen to have a Vision Pro and you want to get rid of it, get on that. But yeah, I think that that's just something that when you really dig into those complaints, it makes sense. People are saying it's too expensive, $3,500 is a really high price to pay for a device that might not be essential to your everyday. It does have so few game-changing apps. It's giving people headaches, making people's faces hurt. We haven't seen anyone citing this directly, but we all know that people are just worried that they look too cool wearing this. So that's probably a big reason for returns as well. Yeah, that could be a big reason. You mentioned apps a little bit, and that's kind of been an interesting angle here too that a lot of people have been addressing about how there just aren't enough apps yet on it and enough features on it yet to use. And that's, I think, because a lot of app developers and a lot of companies are still kind of in the workshop for developing apps for this device. Like I think TikToks came out only pretty recently uh, relative to the device release. So it seems like what you can do isn't exactly going a long way right now. It's kind of like the first launch of any product, really, where the usability is a bit minor. And I think you got to wait a little bit for more usability to come with it. I guess that's the thing is, if I'm Apple, I don't know where I'm looking right now. Obviously, you're looking just to see what the rate of return ends up being and how overwhelming it may be, or underwhelming, actually, still could be. This could just be people being loud on the internet, not liking something. We've all been to restaurants with bad Yelp reviews that turned out they're pretty great. Yeah. But, you know, I think what is their next priority? Because if the complaints were going in one direction, you know, it's simply just not comfortable enough. Then you have your mandate, make a product that's lighter, get that to market. But there are a lot of fronts that they're going to battle on here. Also, they're doing it with what feels like they kind of were going down this line where there are no competitors. But then Mark Zuckerberg also entered the picture and I feel like kind of just like really (laughs) poked them. Yes. I was going to ask if you watched his Instagram review of the Apple Vision Pro, which mainly was a Quest 3 ad. (laughs) I will say that. Yeah. Definitely. He is a businessman, if nothing else. Yeah, he smelled blood in the water. And if you didn't see it, Mark Zuckerberg released a video and she said, I think the direct quote is, I don't just think that Quest is the better value. I think Quest is the better product, period. Mm -hmm. And he did give Apple some credit for producing what is kind of a more premium entertainment device. But then he laid out this argument for why his company's Quest 3 should have headset supremacy. Yeah. And I think it accounts to a lot of the Vision Pro's kind of limitations when compared to mostly a VR headset that you can game on or you can do other things on or you can watch YouTube on. And it kind of seems like the Apple device is quite sleek and exciting but kind of fails in the realm of, again, that usability or just the diversity of uses that it has right now. Yeah, I think if you were judging the success of this product launch for Apple on whether it generated this iPhone moment, we are seeing that that didn't happen. And I think that you're seeing that now the competition is sensing that as well. Mm -hmm. I think that when you look at Zuckerberg's list of things that Vision Pro doesn't have, like Quest 3 weighs 120 grams less so you can wear it longer. It doesn't require to be wired into a battery pack most of the time, so it's easier to move around. Quest has a wider field of view, and he kind of added in a perfect dig that it's about seven times less, you know, in terms of price tags. So Mm -hmm. it feels like Apple had its moment to really kind of get that excitement to coalesce. I think that's where you're starting to see this story with returns being talked about a lot, and then Zuckerberg sweeping in and taking the headlines It really just feels like the moment is slipping out of Apple's grasp. Yeah, it does feel that way. I will say, though, at the end of the day, what Apple was able to do here is definitely generate buzz. I mean, if it may be negative at times, 
reviews for this have dominated the internet over the past few weeks, good and bad. So at least they're kind of in the talk where I feel like Quest 3 is very much not a topic of conversation on your usual internet viewing time. So I I do think that there is something to be said about Apple being in the space and being ready in there, but it's a little too early to tell if we were ready for this product. Yeah, I'm going to view this as just a target customer of theirs where as I have an iPhone in my pocket talking to you on a MacBook while an Apple TV is in the room, none of this makes me have any desire to try the Vision Pro. And so I think that seeing these headlines about people being so dissatisfied, I don't know, I was already skeptical and they're going to have to prove it to me somehow that this is worth me taking another look at. Yeah, completely agreed. I think I'm in the same boat. I also just don't like wearing things on my face generally. Same. Just a personal thing. Like even blue light glasses I have a problem with. I, don't, I never wear these. Yeah, they look great, but also, yeah, just break them over your knee. Yeah, yeah. No thanks to the wearables. Good idea. Also, just while we're here, just an aside, going back to Zuckerberg's video and you know, no matter how you feel about him or Meta, what a move. Yeah. Putting this video out, like he's coming off his year of efficiency, the company's value is at an all-time high. He just added a whole lot of billions to his own net worth. This is a CEO who's feeling good. Mm -hmm. And like this was his heat check. Like when a basketball player is making baskets and they start taking increasingly difficult shots to test how out of their mind they're actually playing. He did it. He took the shot. And this was like a nothing but net moment for him. So what should be Apple's big moment, I feel like Meta's hat just feels like it's more in charge of the big tech momentum conversation right now. Yeah. And we'll see how that continues going forward. I'm sure it'll be quite a battle in the years to come. All right, that's going to do it for us today. Thanks for tuning in to the Hustle Daily Show. We're a proud part of the HubSpot Podcast Network. Our editor today is Robert Hartwig, and our executive producer is Darren Clark. We've got a lot more tech and business coverage in our newsletter. If you're not subscribed, go get yourself signed up at thehustle.co slash email. And we will see you next week. Hey, everybody, it's John from the Hustle Daily Show. I've been listening to an awesome podcast recently called Marketing Made Simple. It's hosted by Dr. JJ Peterson, and it's brought to you by the HubSpot Podcast Network, which is the audio destination for business professionals. Marketing Made Simple brings you practical tips to make your marketing easy and more importantly, make it actually work. I was listening to an episode recently that really stuck with me and it was called How Real Should You Be at Work? In that episode, Dr. J.J. Peterson and his co-host April Sunshine Hawkins talked with Ashley Menzies Babatunde, who is the creator and host of her own podcast called No Straight Path, and it explores the human stories behind success. But On their podcast, Ashley dove into the importance of embracing humanity in the workplace and acknowledging that setbacks and emotional challenges are a natural part of everybody's daily life. So I found that really, really impactful. You can listen to Marketing Made Simple wherever you get your podcasts.